Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Edist Explains. Today we're going to talk about ChatGPT. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you about what is ChatGPT, why it's such a big deal, and can it really take away your jobs or some jobs out there in the market? So let's dive straight into it. ChatGPT is a new chatbot created by OpenAI. OpenAI is one of the most leading research firms on AI, which is artificial intelligence, and ChatGPT here. Uh, is a chatbot. The GPT stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. It's a model. Don't be too concerned about the full form of it. It's basically a model which is trained on large and large chunks of text data. And based on that, it's able to answer certain questions. And the way it does it is in the form of a chat. So you can actually chat with this machine or this bot and it replies to you as if it's a human. Uh, it's been trending since the last one month or so and you can try out many different things. It's meant to literally be an assistant. So for example, you're cooking a new dish, let's say you're cooking pasta or you're cooking biryani, you can actually ask it, give me the recipe for you know the chicken biryani and it'll actually just give you the entire recipe. Now you'll say, I could have got that from Google as well. Yes, but ChatGPT is a bit smarter here in the sense that number one, ChatGPT is not actually Googling anything. It already knows these answers. So it's not having to actually Google something. It, it's been trained on all these texts and it knows the answers, that's one. And the second thing is, it actually understands its answer. So when you Google search, and let's say you search for chicken biryani recipe, and then you say, you know, no, I don't want to use basmati rice, I want to use something else. You would have to actually go and see if somebody has answered that question earlier, or you have to reach out to someone who's written that recipe. Interesting thing here is, you can ask ChatGPT to give you a recipe and say, you know what, I want to replace the rice. I don't want basmati rice, I want some other rice. And ChatGPT will actually understand this and it knows the recipe without basmati rice with, with some other rice and it will actually suggest that recipe to you. Another example which for the non-cooks of you, those of you who are let's say probably programmers, uh, let's say you are actually developing a program on Python to create a backend server. right? And you can actually ask it, I want to create uh, a social media application, write the backend server for this or just write some simple code for it and it will actually generate some code for you in Python. Now the beauty of it is you can go ahead and say, you know what, no, no, actually I've changed my mind. I don't want this in Python. I want this in JavaScript. It will understand that you want the specific code in JavaScript and it will take that entire code and translate it to JavaScript. And then you can go ahead and say, you know, add a couple of methods to this. One is to authenticate the user. One is to give the user's details. Again, it understands all that and it will edit its previous answer. Now this was generally unheard of. Usually all the bots, etc., that we played with earlier, never understood the ability to edit or to have the context of the previous situation. So you give it some question, it used to give some answer, but here it's actually understanding the previous context. And as you give more and more instructions, it's able to modify the previous instruction. And the applications are mind blowing. I mean, let's say you don't want to get into coding or cooking. You can even go into things like, uh, you know, artistry. For example, if you want to generate a poem, a poem on Python, you can go ahead and say, write a poem on Python and it will, it will generate that. If you want it to be in the style of someone, let's say you want it to be in the style of Robert Frost or John Keats, it will actually create it in that person's style. And it's not only here, people have done all sorts of interesting things. There are people who have actually generated lyrics of Drake songs, generated lyrics about a song about, let's say, uh, you know, gangster life. And it has to be in the style of so-and-so artist, let's say in the style of Drake. And it just generates, it understands what Drake's style is and it tries to mimic it as much as possible. This is very interesting because it's, what's happened here is, Drake has probably never produced a song on that topic, not gangster life, but other topics, let's say and it's able to take Drake style and apply it to the topic that you want. So it has some knowledge on the topic and it knows Drake style, so it's able to combine those things. This kind of reasoning generally humans know well and we, we still find it difficult to do. Like if you ask me or if you ask yourself to write a poem, uh, let's say on solving a Rubik's Cube, but it has to be in the, style, in the style of Robert Frost. Well, I don't know either one of them. I've read some of Robert Frost's poems, but I don't know his style. I don't know how to solve Rubik's Cube, but that GPT apparently knows how to do both of them, which is quite interesting. Uh, now, to be fair, OpenAI is not the first one to release such an application uh, or to develop such an application. It's the first one to release something to the public. Uh, Microsoft, Facebook, um, Google have all created these kind of uh, models before and with different accuracy, some of them having better accuracy than ChatGPT apparently. And each one of them, uh, you know, has not been released yet to the public. OpenAI is the only one who's been released to the public. So we've been able to test it out. 
All right, so this is what ChatGPT is and this is why you should be excited about it. And I highly recommend that you definitely go ahead and check out ChatGPT and play around with it. It's amazing, it's mind blowing. Now, what about your jobs? Are your jobs going to be taken away by someone, by some machine who is probably doing all the things that you do on a regular basis? Uh, we have to take a different view on this one. And the first view that, or the first answer that you should kind of expect here is, I don't know. Nobody can tell you for sure because nobody knows the future for sure. But there are certain signs here that you should watch out for. Now, first things first is we've never seen an invention like this before. All the other inventions you've seen have been with more efficiency, but not so much that those inventions can think. So for example, if you just go from the, to the invention of a computer, let's say, uh, before that or before the internet, you know, you used to you know, have typewriters uh, or typists using typewriters to send faxes and so on. So typists were, if you go back and see, they were generally in a lot of demand because uh, they were the ones who could type really fast and they had access to a typewriter because typewriter itself was expensive and you know, uh, once you print it out, then it has to go for a fax and so on. Uh, the moment in the internet came and the computer itself became cheaper to have for everybody, typewriters lost their jobs because everybody could type. Didn't matter that everybody was typing a little bit slower, it's that everybody could type and 100 people typing slower is still many, many more emails sent, many more communications sent than one person typing really fast. So, but uh, this kind of a, a transition that I'm talking about is still a transition of more people getting the technology and the technology becoming more efficient. At nowhere did the keyboard start thinking on its own. Here with the application of or the invention of ChatGPT, you can't help but think that it started to think on its own. And if you take this to the logical extreme, if the machine can actually think on its own, then what exactly will humans be there for? Like humans, the major thing that separates us from everybody else is our intelligence. And if that is also being replicated, then what would our job be? Now, I'm not saying that chat GPT is there yet or that it will do that for all the things out there. Um, you know, manual labor and anything physically intensive is still like much further out because that involves robotics and so on. But let's focus on just, you know, things like software tasks and any knowledge work that just the output is generally speaking text. And while we talk about chat GPT, let's not also forget about other models like Dal E uh, and Whisper that are able to generate uh, images and audio respectively. So there's this whole field of generative AI, which is generating a lot of content. Tag GPT specifically generates um, uh, text, but Dal E generates images, and uh, you know there are other ones that generate uh, audio. The, all of these things which were not possible earlier and these are creative expressions that humans used to do are now going to be possible with the help of AI. So in the combination of all these things, what's going to happen? Whose jobs are in effect? Well, let's talk specifically about software engineers. Um, software engineers have a difficult job as usual. Uh, you know, there's a lot of logic involved. You have to, you have to understand the requirements that you have to produce. So I don't think ChatGPT takes away software jobs right away. but if you look at certain other inventions like GitHub has done something called GitHub Copilot, which most programmers are using. Copilot is able to generate a lot of code that generally freshers would have generated. And same thing with ChatGPT. You can actually probably not get it to write your entire application uh, and you know, or write all complex software, but what work freshers were doing, it's possible that ChatGPT can do those works. It, will not be fully perfect but remember freshers never produced fully perfect work anyways so a senior engineer could just use chat gpt to you know, generate the output instead of using junior engineers especially those engineers who take three to six months to learn on the job who are using that those many you know months to actually learn all the skills and so on whereas chat gpt already knows all these things so it is a little bit alarming there if you are a software engineer especially a junior engineer if you don't have any specific skills it is possible that a senior engineer could just use chat GPT instead of you. Chat GPT has no working hours. It works day, it's available day and night. Chat GPT doesn't need to take any washroom breaks or does not need to eat. Uh, chat GPT is probably uh, going to be a faster typer than you as well. So what exactly is your advantage? Now, obviously it's not reached that level yet, but at the way it's going, it could reach that level, which means you need to have a different strategy eventually in the next four or five years if you want to get into the software domain. 
other jobs that are likely to be affected are content creation jobs uh, the video game industry is looking to be massively disrupted because things like generating game assets uh, you know all those graphics that you see in games um, and you know all the backgrounds and all the scenery and so on that you see in games is now uh, going to be or within the next few years going to be generated by ai and it's going to be done much cheaper because artists generally were a little bit expensive but it could just be done cheaper uh, with ai and similarly with you know things like sound effects and so on it's very possible that ai is going to be able to generate those content writing especially uh, ai has become really good at generating and while it may not generate your entire website content it could generate enough such that it requires only minor tweaks by a senior person to actually publish it these are areas that are definitely going to be affected now coming specifically again to software engineering and what you should do the invention or the the, the release of chat gpt means that it's no longer sufficient to know just enough programming to get a job uh, if you look at any company from a services company to a product company they all have a coding test at the start chat gpt is able to solve that coding test pretty easily in fact if you give chat gpt just text interviews it will pass all the text interviews for sure it's just it can't speak yet so in terms of pure coding ability to crack the coding rounds of any company yes chat gpt is able to do that today so what does that mean for you you need to be minimum or minimum more skilled than chat gpt meaning you should be not only knowing you know the, the basic coding of how to clear but you should know how to create applications as well and we don't know how smart chat gpt is and how what its limits are and what limit you have to go beyond so there's a lot of trial and error that you need to do over here one of the things i would suggest is as the world is moving towards ai you should also learn ai and learn as much as possible about the ai world otherwise you might just remain a typewriter or typist on a typewriter and not move to the internet that's the same kind of a transition that could happen here or just on a much larger scale so learning the maths required for ai learning programming required for ai and just learning ai in general will become almost compulsory in the next five years if not now so don't just rely on your basic curriculum of your college remember college curriculums take a lot of time to update don't rely just on that don't rely just on you know knowing one web framework or one 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 mobile framework or something you need to know about ai uh, that's what my firm belief is and i think if not knowing how to code an ai you need to know at least the basics of it so that in case in the future the world shifts completely to ai and it's no longer about you programming but you working on an ai that will create programs but if it comes to that you can at least be a good ai programmer in that way so i would highly suggest you pick up ai skills you know uh, over there and then that's just the ai skills on top of that then pick a specific technology so that you can use ai with that technology like ai for web development ai for uh, you know mobile development ai for cyber security and so on uh, the world is going to change a lot as per the way it's looking like with chat gpt even chat gpt on its current way right now it's very much possible that it could uh, change the world now a lot of people have shown some criticism to it saying that it's not really updated like it requires a lot of training space so today if you ask uh, uh, chat gpt a, a very recent news something that happened just a day back chat gpt won't know because it's not trained on that data uh, this seems like a minor problem to me because as long as soon as openai figures out how to feed it the latest data it will learn over there so it's more of an engineering problem and engineers generally end up solving those problems pretty soon so that's one another problem they say is the huge cost so apparently uh, openai is burning a lot of money daily to just serve all these requests again all of these things you know my take on this is all of these things generally start off uh, expensive if you just look at the cost of uh, you know the mobile phones that started off or the the mobile data that started off or even the cost of you know computers when they started off versus the cost of computers now they eventually go down uh, and they are accessible eventually to a lot of people so the cost and uh, you know uh, being updated these are two criticisms given to chat gpt but seeing the history of technology it's not really concerning at all in fact that's the natural trajectory it always starts expensive it always starts uh, not so usable but slowly but surely it gets there and everybody ends up using it so watch out for chat gpt i generally don't uh, you know advocate for uh, you know trendy things that you know there's a lot of things that come into the news and then go away uh, but chat gpt has got some serious uh, traction not only from you know everybody uh, like lay people like us but a lot of experts 
of computer programming have said that this is a real breakthrough so if nothing uh, do check it out and see how you can use it i know a lot of people are already starting using it for their coding assignments for their homework and so on remains to be seen whether they put a ban on that and how could they even put a ban on that but a lot of industries are about to be changed just because of chat gpt i hope you like the explanation uh, and and this uh, introduction to chat gpt please let us know in the comments below what other kind of things you'd like us to cover and we'd we'll be happy to cover them until next time thanks so much and don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button as well thanks and see you later.